Hello and welcome to this Dr. Foss Maths key skill video on multiplying a decimal by a decimal. So we've got two decimal numbers here and a decimal number is just when we have digits after the decimal point. Now I'm going to write out the strategy and then we're going to carry it out. So the first thing is to ignore the decimal points and multiply as if they were whole numbers and then we have to adjust for any movements in decimal point which I'll explain how we do that. Okay, so let me show you how this works. A, we ignore the decimal point. So we ignore that decimal point, we get 436. That would be 24. So we're going to do 436 multiplied by 24. So we times each of the 4, 3, and 6 by the 4 first. 6 times 4 is 24, but the 4 carry the 2, and I'm going to do this quite quickly. 3 times 4 is 12, plus the carry 2 is 14, so we put the 4, carry the 1, and 4 times 4 is 16, plus the carried 1 is 17, so we've got 17 there. So 436 times the 4 is this, and then do you remember, we're going to times each of the 4, 3, and 6 by the 2 now, but actually, because the 2 is a tens digit, we're times it by 20, I'm going to put a 0 at the end, so now we can just times by 2. So we're going to do the 6 times the 2, the 3 times the 2, and the 4 times the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, put the 2, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus the carried 1 is 7. And 4 times 2 is 8. And then, ignoring the carries, we just add these two numbers. So 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 7 plus 7 is 14, carry the 1. And 1 plus 8 is 9, plus the 1 is 10. So we've got 10,464. Now we've got to do the second part now, adjust for any movement in decimal point. Well we did 436 times 24, but 436 are decimal points here, so we need to move the decimal point two places to the left so that we actually have 4.36. And the same here, we've used 24 the decimal point's currently here, but we want it to be there, so that's one movement. So let's count those movements. That's one, two, and then a third movement here in total. So the decimal point is currently here. It's after the units digit. If we move it one, two, three places in total, we get 10.464. And the way to do a common sense check with this is just to round these numbers and then times them. So 4.36, roughly 4. 2.4, let's say it's roughly 2. 4 times 2 is 8. It's going to be a bit more than 8, though, because these are slightly more than 4 and 2. And indeed, look, this is 10. It's the right kind of ballpark, rather than, say, I don't know, 104 point something. We'd know we'd get it wrong, because that's very far away from 8. Let's do it for the second one. We first ignore the decimal point and multiply this as if whole numbers. So we do 26 times 8. So 6 times 8 is 48. Put the 8, carry the 4. 2 times 8 is 16, plus the carried 4 is 20. So we get 208. Now, as before, we've got to count the decimal point jumps from the end. So that's one jump to get to there, and one jump to get to there. In total, that was two jumps. So from the end, we do two jumps. One, two, we have 2.08. So that is the final answer. Let's just do a common sense check. We're timesing 2.6 by a number just slightly less than 1. When he times by a number slightly less than 1, it's going to make it a bit smaller. So we do end up with a number slightly smaller than 2.6. So that looks about right. 